Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the Autosomo of DNA, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two Iranian Neolithic farmers, both are men, uh, both are from Ganj Dareh in western Iran, and let's begin with the first individual. Uh, this is his predicted phenotype, with snipper free he is predicted to have brown eyes, white skin and black hair, uh, with Maina Shakoto he is predicted to have dark brown eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair. Uh, with Wysek, he's also predicted to have dark coloring. Um, what's interesting is the difference between Wysek skin prediction and Snipper Free. Snipper Free says that he's got white skin. Wysek is saying he's got brown skin. He had some of the variants for lighter skin, and overall, I'd say probably had light skin indeed. Um, he did not have BH1, no blue eye haplotype 1, which is pretty interesting because uh, even Eurasians, even like Japanese people, people in America, and Native Americans, they often have BH1, blue eye haplotype 1. So it's kind of surprising that he being a West Eurasian did not have this mutation. Definitely had very dark eye color. He's got uh, this very interesting genotype that basically increases the risk of hemochromatosis. It's a very surprising genotype because it's often called the Celtic curse or the Irish curse because it's very common in Irish people but very uncommon in every other ethnicity. Uh, he did not have the pro financing pro no go learner variation, no no go learner gene, so uh, higher odds of schizophrenia compared to Europeans. And he's got a 2A1 genotype in TAC1 variation of DRD2, so slightly higher odds of ADHD and Parkinson's relative to other humans. It's kind of an ancestral genotype because when I see when I see A1 here, I'm already thinking about some kind of Neanderthal or monkey admixture because they tend to have A1A1. Most modern humans tend to have A2A2. Another thing that's pretty surprising is that he's got the warrior or met met genotype in Comte's Valmet variation. So advantage in memory and attention tasks, higher levels of dopamine in the brain. This is a very typical genotype for Europeans, but pretty atypical for somebody outside of Europe. And uh, he did not have the sociopath gene, no derived OXTR. Uh, definitely, as you can see here, optimistic and empathetic, handles stress well. Um, he did not have East Asian derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no shovel shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. Um, he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation. All this means is he did not have the European, there's other lactose persistence mutations outside of Europe. He did not have the European one. And he's got the mutation that protects against myopia, so um, it's pretty cool. He might have, he probably did not need glasses to see in the distance. When it comes to polygenic traits, he's got a modestly high genetic risk score for Crohn's disease. He's got a pretty high risk score for type 1 diabetes. He's got a pretty high risk score for Parkinson's. Um, he's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a pretty below average risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, he's got a pretty high risk score for asthma. Uh, he's got a pretty low risk score for coronary heart disease, and he's got a pretty high risk score for stroke. So the only thing he's got a pretty low risk score for is coronary heart disease. And this is what he scores with Eurogene's K13 on GD match, mostly West Asian, but the risk 24% South Asian too. Uh, the South Asian here does not represent AASI, but it it does represent a little bit of an AASI-like shift that these Iranian Neolithic farmers had. So relative to the Caucasus hunter-gatherers, uh, these Iranian Neolithic farmers have a little bit of a shift towards ASI and ancestral South and South Eurasians, basically. Uh, this is what he scores with Harappa World. So aside from the Balochian Caucasian, there is 7% South Indian here as well. So there is some ASI shift, uh, some shift towards South South India. Uh, he is closest to Brahui and various people of Iran, but uh, South Southeastern Iran and Southwestern Pakistan, uh, which is pretty much where this kind of um, Iranian Neolithic component peaks. This is what he scores with Pond DNA LK10. In case you watched my videos on Cortias and Satsurblia, they score 95 or something like above 90% CHG here. So him scoring CHG and ASI2 means that relative to the CHG, relative to these Caucasus hunter gatherers, he's got some kind of South Asian, South Eurasian admixture, right? Um, he is still closest to Makrani and people of um, Southeastern Iran and Southwestern Pakistan. Here's what he scores with uh, ancient Eurasia K6 on GD match. Uh, mostly he's scoring ancestral North Eurasian, followed by Natufian at 40%. And the third category, the third largest category, is the ancestral South Eurasian at 10%. He is closest to CHG here uh, with this calculator oracle. 
and he's actually getting model as a mixture of CHG plus Gujarati or CHG plus various uh, South South Indians. This is what he scores with Gedrosia K3. It's a pretty exotic result, partly because he's got some East Eurasian admixture, of course, but also partly because it's an ancient individual. For example, the Sub-Saharan African here, I very much doubt that it's real. Um, now, moving on to the second sample. Got the same Y DNA, the same mitochondrial DNA as the previous sample, also a man. This is what this other sample is predicted to look like. He's definitely darker than the previous individual. He's scoring still dark brown eyes. Greek shaped nose and black hair, but a higher likelihood of dark brown eyes, lower likelihood of brown eyes. With Snipper Free, he's actually predicted to have intermediate skin, and he did not have BH1, no blue eye haplotype 1, which is, by the way, very surprising. Uh, very surprising genotype for somebody that's Eurasian. Uh, from West Eurasia, to, to not even have blue eye haplotype 1. Very surprising stuff. Uh, he's got some variants for lighter Eurasian skin, but he's also got some variants for darker non European skin, and What's interesting here is he's got a rare blonde variant in TPCN2, which I'm going to show you uh, with code gen later. And uh, this is the exotic TPCN2 variation. I find it interesting and funny that they dubbed the blonde allele uh, risk allele. It's a risk allele? Yep. Uh, interesting. It's kind of like a negative connotation to the blonde hair allele. And uh, he's got the European no-go learner mutation in DRD2's Pro 19 Pro variation. So lower risk of schizophrenia, uh, less dopamine D2 receptors in the brain. Typically European genotype, and he's got the warrior, uh, which is a uh, val, val genotype in Compt. So uh, this is kind of a typically non-European genotype, right? And this this uh, leads to um, lower amount of dopamine in the brain. He wasn't genotyped for the main variation in OXTR, but based on his genotype here, uh, I can say he's got the sociopath gene, and uh, he did not have East Asian derived EDAR, no East Asian facial traits, no shovel shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. Um, he did have the anti-myopia mutation, once again, just as the previous sample. Um, and he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is, by, by the way, it's a very, it's a European mutation. So if you're not a European, you're not going to have it. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a modestly high genetic risk score for Crohn's disease, a modestly high risk score for type 2 diabetes. Um, he's got a high risk score for schizophrenia. He's got a high risk score for Parkinson's disease. He's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder. Um, he's got a above average risk score for coronary heart disease, a below average risk score for type 1 diabetes, and a low risk score for asthma. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Now notice how he's scoring 25% South Asian on top of the West Asian that he's got. Uh, so the South Asian here does not represent ASI. Uh, the South Asian already has some affinities towards uh, West Asia and the Caucasus. So he's more West Asian and Caucasus than you might get the impression from by looking at this result here. Um, and this is what he scores with Harappa World. Once again here he's scoring 8% South Indian and the South Indian categories, the South Indian group does have some Caucasus and West Asian affinities as well. He is closest to various Makranis, Baloch, Brahvi. Um, and with the Oracle, this is kind of what we see, very high distances, because all of these modern ethnicities have uh, other admixtures such as Mediterranean, Northeast European. And this is what he scores with Panty and ALK10. Here you can see, aside from the CHG, he's also scoring some ASI, and all of these calculators uh, create the impression that these Iranian Neolithic farmers had some kind of, a lot of ASI admixture, but this is not the case, actually, because the ASI and the ASI in South Indian categories here already have Caucasus and West Asian shift. They are not pure ASI. They are not representative for what pure ASI would score. Um, with uh, Dodicat, he's actually scoring 9% South Asian as well. So this just uh, adds up to my point. But in terms of his actual ancestral South Eurasian admixture, it's not even that much. It's only 12%, uh, not 24%, not 25%, like you would get the impression by looking at previous calculator results. Uh, with the Oracle, he's either getting modeled as a mixture of Makrani plus various ancient North Eurasians, or a mixture of Caucasus hunter-gatherers plus Onge, Papuan, Papua, and the Manis. Uh, so kind of, relative to the Caucasus hunter-gatherers, he's more shifted towards uh, South Eurasians. And he's scoring some Sub-Saharan African and East Eurasian with Gidrosia K3 too. Thank you guys for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And you can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description.